That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a, quite frankly, a very tough question and my honest, fair answer to it regarding the Notre Dame program edition of the Always Irish Show. Thanks for being here. Obviously, you can find this program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. Appreciate that as well. Notifications on. You'll be alerted every time new episode drops. Twitter, search bar, always Irish, or just type it in. Either way, emails, always Irish, at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want me. You can get me call in line 312 988 15. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, every game week, 9 a.m. Central, folks. Program it in your phone, above your wife, above work, above your boss. Number one, always Irish call in. Priorities, priorities, folks. Where are yours? Fighting Irish Wire Media, make sure every day. Put it on your list, your normal Notre Dame media routine. Add Fighting Irish Wire to it, not just my stuff, everybody else. Make it a part of your Notre Dame routine every day. Check it. You won't be sorry you did. So this is touchy. It's nuanced. It's mentally challenging to properly wrap your mind around and fully process. As with most most things in Notre Dame land, it's complicated. It's complicated. Nothing's ever simple in Notre Dame land. Nothing ever seems like it's black and white, right or wrong, this or that. There's always more to it with Notre Dame, no matter what. No matter what. There's, it's always complicated, it seems. Okay? Over the bye week, which made me mad for a lot of reasons, not that we had a bye, I just saw a lot of football that made me mad. So many of these teams that are undefeated have not played anybody better than a high school team yet, and we're almost halfway through the year. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's just a very unbalanced year, but I feel like there's a lot of teams that are halfway, damn near halfway through their schedule and have not been tested at all yet. And that just bothers me. It just does. Um, but... Over the bye week, on one of the morning call-in shows, a very genuine, fair question got asked to me. Here was the exchange. The caller called and said, John, I know your history with Brian Kelly, and you're not the biggest fan of him and all that. But I'm going to ask you a genuine question I hope you could be honest about. And I said, shoot. And he said, if Brian Kelly was coaching in Notre Dame still, would we have lost to Marshall? Now, my answer to that was easy. No. Nope. Notre Dame, this Notre Dame team, team does not lose to Marshall if Brian Kelly's around. He doesn't. Those were the kind of games Kelly ended up finding a way to win, to win, rather, without the D. It's win D when he talks. Those are the kind of games he ended up later in his tenure winning. Think of, what was it, 2018 Ball State at home Beautiful September day at home, you know, perfect weather, and then everybody's miserable. We played terrible, almost lost to Ball State. Toledo last year, same thing. Early in the year, you know, good weather at home, and a team you have no business playing, and you almost lose. But Kelly found a way to make it ugly, but we win. And then we, all, we complain about it till the next game that we didn't beat them by more, and then we keep it moving, and we're glad we got the win. That's how that ended up going with Kelly. I would always get on and say, why has it got to be that close against Ball State or Toledo? Notre Dame should be way ahead of them with talent, blah, blah, blah. No reason not to blow them out. Kelly would find a way to win them. We would be stressed and ask why we can't blow somebody out like a normal good team ever. But he would find a way to win them. So no. Notre Dame would not 
have lost to Marshall under Brian Kelly. That ain't the interesting part of this. Now, hope you don't turn me off yet. Because that's not where this discussion ends. It's where it starts. This is where this discussion starts, not freaking ends. So stick around. Here's the deal. While I think Kelly beats Marshall, I also know that whatever happens in the regular season under Brian Kelly, if he stayed at Notre Dame, we were never winning anything I care about at the end of the year under him. So how do you marry these two things I believe to be true? Yes, I believe Kelly finds a way to beat Marshall. Really ugly, but he finds a way to win it. That doesn't mean, however, that I miss Kelly and I want him to be back. And John, don't you wish you had him now? No, hell no. No. While he would beat Marshall, I have enough clear evidence banked from when we play good teams or a major bowl game or a playoff game to know we might beat Marshall with Kelly. Big deal. You're going to get to the end of the year and not be able to compete with the best teams. You're not winning anything. Big picture. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. There was enough evidence. And the thing is, if I saw that Brian Kelly was at Notre Dame the last year, if I saw and heard and read, oh, Kelly's really getting more engaged with recruiting, changing how he's dealing with recruiting quarterbacks because it isn't good enough doing this, getting more engaged here, going about it a different way, trying to be different. If I was told all that, my answer to this might be different, but I wasn't. I was told Brian Kelly was never changing his approach to recruiting at Notre Dame. Therefore, it's fair for me to assume since he wasn't changing, neither would the results. Neither would the results. So this puts you in a very awkward position in your mind. So yes, Kelly, I believe, would have been able to find a way to be Marshall. But also, we were never winning a playoff game under Brian Kelly in Notre Dame. We are accepting now some short-term pain for the hope of long-term gain that the way Freeman recruits and develops is going to be better and different to where there is a light at the end of the tunnel in the future in ways that there hasn't been under Brian Kelly, where you just knew you weren't going to be Clemson, you're not going to beat Alabama, Notre Dame can't compete the way we were built under Brian Kelly in those environments. Cannot compete. I've seen enough. I saw all the evidence I needed in big bowl games and the playoff and just the best teams we play on our schedule under Kelly. I'll give him at Oklahoma in 2012. I will give him the nod on that one. You also have to realize I have to go back 10 years to give him the nod on one. That tells you everything you need to know, okay? Um, the Lawrence-less Clemson thing, it was a big night. I loved it, had to have it, but it still has an asterisk because no one could say we were playing at our best against their best when the best player that would be on the field wasn't there that night. I love the win. Injuries happen. But I am not going to be disingenuous enough to act like we beat Clemson at home with Lawrence. It's different. So that's how I see all this. And you want to know what else, too? If you want to tell me, John, uh, you know, I disagree with you on this Kelly thing. You know, uh, you can't say that the results weren't going to be different in future years. You don't really know that. I know Kelly. I know the way Kelly recruited the most important positions at Notre Dame was not good enough to get us where we need to be. And I know he was not changing. Okay. 
that tells me logically the results were never going to change. You know who, you know what else proves that this is kind of a fact and not an opinion? Brian Kelly left because he knows he was locked in that dynamic at Notre Dame, didn't want to put in the extra work it takes to recruit Notre Dame right, the extra hurdles with the academics and you might have to put years invested in recruiting a guy. Then you find out his test scores aren't good enough. Three years later, you got to pull off him. Who wants to do that? Freeman does. Kelly didn't. Freeman does. Kelly didn't. So Kelly also knew there was no light at the end of this tunnel because he knew he wasn't going to change. Recruiting's a lot easier for him down south. So he figured, why work harder? Right? So... This is a case of, a mental case of, maybe Notre Dame's got to take one step back to get two steps ahead in a couple years. That's what I think Marshall might be, okay? Um, But yes, I think Kelly beats Marshall. But overall, I do not have, I would not have the optimism about what a a Notre Dame Kelly-led team could be Ultimately, I would not have the same optimism I do of Freeman. I just think Freeman's recruiting, even with the challenges on the top end, is going to be a head and shoulders better than anything Kelly did at Notre Dame. That automatically opens up your options on the plus end higher than Kelly would ever add it. So these are hard. It's kind of conflicting in a way. To say, yeah, the old guy wouldn't have lost that game, but I also, that doesn't mean I want him back. No, he wouldn't have lost to Marshall. No, I don't want him back. I'll take my one step back this year with the roster nowhere near playoff ready to get two steps ahead down the road in a couple years. And guess what else? Take it a step further. I know this is a lot of mental gymnastics, but like, welcome to Notre Dame fandom, folks. Nothing's easy to process. Take it a step further. Let's say we get four or five years down the road. Freeman really can't figure it out. Things get away from us. Bad luck, injury. NIL beats our butts. We can't compete. Like, we just don't, we, we're not great. We're not good, okay? Even if that happened in four or five years, I would still say it was worth trying it with Freeman. The spot we were left in, Kelly leaving the way he did, culture was good. If Notre Dame was ever going to take a shot on a young guy without experience and all that, now was it. Freeman was it. So even if it doesn't work out, I am not going to look back at Notre Dame and say you shouldn't have tried that experiment. Now's the time to do it if you were ever open to doing it in Notre Dame. Going young, energy, no body of work, all that. Now would be the time. So I just found this interesting. um, And I am mature enough through my distaste and dislike of Brian Kelly. I am still intellectually honest and mature enough to say, no, no, no. Brian Kelly finds a way to be Marshall. He's just not going to find a way to win any playoff game or any major ball. Both of those could be true at the same time. I don't miss him. I'm glad he's gone. Freeman's on a good path. Things are stabilizing. But wrap your mind around what I'm saying. Yes, Kelly beats Marshall. No, that doesn't mean I'd prefer we have him now instead of Freeman. I know it sounds messed up. But there's no light at the end of the Kelly Tunnel at Notre Dame. There may be one under Freeman. That's an upgrade. 